Hello everyone. So I am back with another video. This is part two and I'm just going to jump right in. And what you see me working on right here is that clay piece that I showed you in the previous video and I'm just painting it a combination of black and a bronze metallic paint. Now if you don't have bronze you could use brown paint with some metallic gold paint mixed in and then just add in some black or you could just do black with gold uh, there's a number of ways that you could recreate this look but that's basically what i'm doing here and then i'm going to bring out some of those jewel effect pastes and i absolutely love this one which i'm going to show you here shortly absolutely love this color. I love the effect of it and it's just a wonderful paste to use for doing projects like this or if you're wanting to create things that look like metal and so forth. So I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to head back over to that flap section that I was working on and I cut out another one of those key plates and now I'm taking some of the antiquing wax and sepia and just applying a light coat of that over it. It just kind of gives it kind of a protective finish and really more of an antiqued sort of look. And so now I'm going to take some of the antiquing wax in sage leaves and apply a light coat of that to the outer sections of that piece just kind of highlight certain areas just to, to give it a little more color and kind of a patina look. And then I'm going to just take and distress some of those edges. Now you could use vintage photo or walnut stain to get really, you know, those nice dark edges. And then I'm going to apply some brads. Now these brads, I think I picked them up at either Michael's or Hobby Lobby. It was a while ago, so I'm not exactly sure where I got these, but you could use any sort of antique metal looking brads for this part. And then I also have the foam squares, which I'm going to lay down and give that 3D effect to that piece there. And then I just want to make sure that I line it up really nicely and now I have that piece which really, you know, looks like an actual metal piece and those waxes they really help give it that appearance of metal. I love the waxes. I can't say it enough. I absolutely love playing with the waxes and love these new antiquing waxes. I'm going to probably do some more pieces with them. Now I'm using my die cutting tool and this is so I can poke a hole through the door piece there and the flap. And then I'm using my brad to attach that door plate to my flap. And the great thing again about using those brads is it adds a little of that metal hardware to give the illusion that that door plate is metal when actually it's just cardstock. And you know, this is a great way of taking cardstock and giving the illusion of it looking like metal, yet not having something so heavy, you know, if it was real metal having something super heavy and having it weigh your piece down. And then I'm just taking another little metal piece, that lock section there, and I got those at Hobby Lobby, but I know you could get some from Tim Holtz. I believe he still has them, and I think even Michaels carries some. But I'm just going to take one of those little lock metal pieces, apply it to the center there, again, just to give this illusion that it's metal. And I love the way that this turned out. Now to soften those edges of my flap, I'm going to take some black lace, and I'm just going to apply those to each edge of my flap. And this is the black lace that is in the newer lace kit 
Again, I sold out of these. I mentioned this in the previous video that I did sell out of those lace kits, but I was able to buy more of the lace, and so I was offering those again. And I think I'm down to about 10 or 15 more of those lace kits before I sell out again. So you still have a chance to pick those up if you're looking to recreate this and wanting to use some of the laces that you see me using here. And there is our flap. Now we have those pieces, those clay pieces that we were working on in the previous video. And then you saw me in the beginning of this video I was painting it in black and a metallic bronze. Again, if you don't have metallic bronze paint, you could use a little bit of burnt umber, a brown color, and mix in some metallic gold to recreate what I did when painting this piece. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the white gold icing paste, and I'm just going to lightly rub sections of this onto my clay piece here just to again give this illusion of it being more of a metal piece and I think that these metallics you know these icing pastes and waxes metallic in general helps give that metal look to my piece and I'm just lightly going over some of the raised areas on that clay piece there and I'm going to come back to this and I'm going to add some of the Tiger's Eye Stone Jewel Effect Paste to this piece, which I absolutely love. It just is a beautiful color and it just makes that piece look kind of aged and more of this copper bronze look to it. So I will be going back to it and finishing it. I'm just going to let that white gold uh, icing paste kind of set a little bit before I apply that. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking one of the designer papers here and I want to cut about two one and a half to two inch strips. And then I'm going to just take and apply those about one inch from each side of my folio. And originally, I was going to place the flap in between this section here, but I changed my mind later on, and I decided to use that flap for the cover, which I will show you here in a little bit. So I had a whole different plan of what I'm going to do with this section of the folio, which, again, I will show you here in a little bit, but I didn't want to skip the step where I attached those two strips of designer paper to that intersection of the folio. Now I'm going to take that clay piece and glue it down onto that door plate section and it just happened to fit perfectly. And then I'm going to take some of the antiquing wax in that sage leaves color and I'm just going to lightly apply some of that to the clay piece and again, this is just to give it that patina effect. It's really so easy to use these waxes. I love them. And it really makes it look like it's metal. And then I'm going to apply a little bit more to my flap just to kind of tie everything together. And as you can see, it's really starting to look like an aged, old, rustic door, which is exactly what I was going for. Really loving the way this turned out. It's so easy to create this. These waxes just really give it that metal, antiqued look that I was going for. And then to finish it off, I'm going to take some of that jewel effect paste in that tiger's eye stone that I was talking about. I love, I absolutely love this stuff. It is so pretty and it just kind of sinks into the creases of my clay piece there and just gives this little bit of glimmer to the piece, kind of in this coppery color. It's so pretty. 
And then I decided to apply a little bit to sections of my flap as well. Again, just to kind of tie in more of that copper um, color throughout my piece here. And as you can see, it just, it sinks into those creases beautifully. It's got a little bit of glitter in it, just a little bit, but it's just, oh, I love this stuff. It's, I think, one of my new favorites, and I'm going to be playing with it a lot. <laughs> I'm going to experiment away. Okay, so now I'm taking that frame from the kit, and I'm going to cut it out, and then I'm going to cut it in half. I thought that this would make kind of a really cool pocket here. And so I just want to cut everything so it fits on the edge of the pocket there. And then I thought I would take some of the lace from the lace kit and use that for the center portion of the pocket. So before I glue my frame pocket down, <laughs> I thought I would take some of the black lace and apply that to the edges of that folio pocket just to give it more of a finished appearance. Just kind of clean up some of those edges there and soften them with some of this black lace. And again, this is the black lace from that lace kit that I launched and I'll have the information listed below on where you can purchase these lace kits. So now I'm just going to take and glue a piece of that lace in the center for my pocket and then I'll glue it down onto the folio there and I just want to make sure that I glue around the sides of that frame and I don't want to glue any part you know to where I close off that pocket there so I want to really pay attention on <laughs> where I'm applying the glue when I go to place this onto that folio pocket And I really, I think that this just kind of adds a little bit of interest to this folio pocket. It was kind of missing something, lacking something. So this is a way to take ephemera pieces, use them up, you know, a little differently. Think out of the box in, you know, the ways that you create your pockets and so forth. And then I thought that I would just take another piece of that lace and add it to that one little pocket that we created in the previous video. Again, just adding in a little more layers, creating more texture, and it just really gives everything more interest to your page when you create all of these beautiful layers, textures, and so forth. And so again, here is where I thought that I was going to be placing that flap in the center of that folio but then I thought no I think I'll use it for the cover and so that is my plan on what I'm going to do with that flap and to finish the flap off I need to do my clay roses now and paint them up and make them look pretty so what I'm going to do is take three different colors I'm going to use red uh, medium pink color and then I'm going to use a little bit of burnt umber brown paint just to kind of tone everything down I don't want it to be too bright or vivid so those are the three colors that I will be using and what I'm trying to do is create a beautiful kind of burgundy color now I didn't have a burgundy color on hand which is why I had to mix these three paints to get that color so maybe you have just a burgundy color that you could use as your base coat here uh, I kind of like using the three different colors of paint because I get a little bit of variation between darks and lights and different ranges of that burgundy color throughout my flower. And then after I have that base coat of my burgundy color, I'm going to take a hunter green color and blend it with a little lighter green color, again just to get a little bit of variation, and paint the leaves. So once everything is painted, I'm going to take that Tiger's Eye Stone Jewel Paste 
and I'm going to apply some of that into the creases of my leaves and my rows. And this just really takes everything to a whole different level. It's such a beautiful texture paste and it's, again, it's so easy to use. So I'm just going to take and lightly brush this over the roses and the leaves. And there you have it. It just really, like I said, it really adds so much. And now, again, to create that kind of patina look, I'm going to take some of the sage leaves and teaking wax and just apply a really light layer of this, trying to hit those raised sections of the leaves and the, the roses. And again, as you can see, just adding those layers it's just starting to come together and i'm loving the way that these are turning out i just think that they have that aged look to them i think it's going to tie in beautifully with that door plate piece that we did and yeah i'm i'm loving this this is so much fun i love playing with the clays and the waxes and just kind of experimenting here it's really fun working with all of this different stuff. And then knowing that I'm going to be using uh, ivory colored lace, I wanted to kind of just hit the edges of the leaves and the rose with a combination of white and titanium buff paint just to create kind of an ivory paint. So if you have ivory colored paint, you could just use that. And I'm just dry brushing the edges of my rose with this because I wanted it to kind of tie in with some of the lace, that white lace that I was going to use. And I also didn't want it to blend in with my red cover. So to make it stand out, I'm dry brushing on that ivory colored paint. And I love this. It just, yeah, it's turning out way better than I thought. <laughs> I wasn't sure how I was going to paint these roses, kind of struggled with it a little bit. And so I just thought, I'm going to start with some red paint or, or this burgundy paint and then just kind of go from there. And I really think that they turned out really nice. Okay, to finish it off, I do want to add just a little bit of the white gold icing paste. I thought that it would just kind of help give it more of that finished look. I do want some of the gold tones. And so, and, and you know what, I'm just having way too much fun playing with all of these different texture pastes and icing pastes. Uh, I haven't used them before. This is the first time I've used them. And so I'm just kind of having fun playing here, but I really do love the effects of them. I think it just really turned out beautiful. And I can't wait to try this on some other clay projects that I'm going to do. And as you can see, it's really so easy to create these beautiful embellishments. Okay, so let's finish this flap. What I thought I would do is so I could make it so it's removable from the cover because I love that old typing book cover. I really don't wanna do much with that. I wanna leave it as it is. So I'm going to take these lace strips and apply them to each side of my flap. And I do want to make sure that I have enough hanging over so it will go over the spine of my cover there. And then I'm going to take and adhere those clay roses and I have some of those metal gears that I showed you from Finnebear and I'll be applying some of those as well. And I'm using the 3D Gloss Gel by Finnebear to adhere these. This is wonderful stuff if you want to uh, adhere metals or larger pieces. This 3D Gloss Gel, I absolutely love it. It works amazing. It allows you a chance to move things around if you need to move them around, but when it dries, 
everything really stays on there nicely. And then you can also apply a coat over your pieces to help protect it as well. I'm not going to do that with these pieces because I want to, you know, that matte sort of finish. So I might take a matte gel and apply those over to kind of seal everything, finish everything. But to adhere the pieces, I love this 3D gloss gel. And then I'm just taking some of those metal gear pieces and placing those underneath the rows and underneath my leaves. And there is our flap cover portion. It's all done. I absolutely love it. I think I think it turned out great. It's you know it's it totally ties in with the theme of the steampunk glamour love it and now I want to go back to that middle section of the folio and figure out what I want to do here because that is where I was going to put the flap initially and so what I thought I would do is take some of those hinges from the ephemera uh, part of the kit and I cut those out and then I thought I could lay those envelopes going down the center there so what I did here is I thought that I would take some of my faux leather, and I think you can get faux leather at the Dollar Tree, and I just cut it into strips. And I wanted to make sure that my strips uh, would hold my envelopes from the kit. So I do want them wider than the envelopes from the kit. And then I took and I glued that hinge piece onto the leather strip, and now I'm taking a hole punch and I'm punching holes through the hinge piece and the leather both. And then I'm going to apply brads where I punched the holes to really make it look like it's metal. And the little brads that I'm using, these are from Tim Holtz. Now I'm not sure if Tim Holtz still offers these little brads, but I do know that you get them at Michael's and I think you can even find them probably at Hobby Lobby. And so this is just another way again to really make something look like it's metal is by adding these little pieces of metal hardware. And so I'm going to do that for all three pieces. And so I'm just finishing up my last strip here and then I'm going to get ready to kind of assemble it and call it good for this video and then I will be back for part three and hopefully be able to kind of tie everything up, finish it, assemble everything, get it all done. So here's that middle section of the folio. Again, I think everything turned out great from the cover to, you know, creating these faux leather metal looking hinges for the envelopes. Uh, you know, you could even put the envelopes inside or have them hang off the strips as I showed you previously. So I hope you guys got lots of ideas. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you loved seeing the new items with the clay and the waxes and so forth. I hope to catch you back with part three. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more videos like this and leave a comment. I love reading all your comments. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you back with the next video.